Hello, my name is Leslie Langston. I am a clinical social worker here at the MIT Student Mental Health and Counseling Services. Today, I would like to present to you a webinar on exam anxiety. We have three goals for this presentation. Number one, understand more deeply how stress and exam anxiety affect your functioning. Number two, learn tips on how to deal with exam anxiety. And number three, practice stress reduction using your mind-body connection. Take a look at this definition of stress. I have highlighted perceives and personal and social resources as a hint to let you know that I will be stressing these as key components of lessening exam anxiety. Some people say stress and anxiety are all in your mind. If you can control your mind, you can control anxiety and stress. Well, if you take a look at this list, you can see why students in particular carry more anxiety and stress. Students have a higher baseline of anxiety and stress due to many factors. This also makes a case for students to be very attentive to working hard to maintain lower daily levels of stress and anxiety. I will talk about this later on. This leads to chronic stress overload. It's a kind of condition where you become used to feeling this way. The problem is that as a result of chronic stress overload, we are at a disadvantage when entering the exam environment. This next slide describes the effects of stress and anxiety on the body and mind. Now may be a good time to clarify. Stress is a physiological condition. Anxiety is a mental state. I tend to use them interchangeably because they are so interrelated. They have a symbiotic relationship. You can see in the column on the left some of the ways in which our cognition is affected by stress and anxiety. Our memory is coarse and imprecise. Our learning is blocked. Our conditioning is defense. Our tendency is to regress or perseverate, and our tone is to flee or destroy. Perhaps you can see how although you may have studied hard, once in the exam room, you find yourself ready for a fight. Or worse, you believe that the test is your enemy and will only serve to expose what you do not know. You may find it difficult to recall what you had studied, make connections which are triggered by exam material, allowing you to bring out old memories of things that you had studied previously or memories of class lectures. This tendency is to regress into a semi-panicked state where your thinking becomes fuzzy or you become frozen with fear. Remember I spoke about the difference between stress and anxiety? The column on the right is a classic description of stress. What happens here is that the physiological response to anxious thoughts and feelings cause your brain to go into survival mode. The brain recognizes that the body is saying, okay, we are in danger, so let's shut down all but the essential functions and prepare to fight, flee, or freeze. Sorry, there is no time to use your higher intellect, your memory of exam materials. We have to survive. Before or during the exam, does this feel familiar to you? This is one of my favorite slides in the lecture. The reason why I like it so much is that it gives hope. You see, the mind-body stress feedback loop is like a series of gears. Very soon, I will show you how to reverse this cycle. As it is, an event, the exam, that you perceive or believe to be stressful will then elicit anxious or negative thoughts, such as, I am not going to do well on this exam, which can then lead to negative feelings pressure, dread, anxiety, hopelessness, which can then lead to negative behaviors and sensations. You know, those physiological or panic symptoms that I talked about previously. But if you learn skills in which to manage exam anxiety, you can learn to create positive, constructive thoughts. These can then lead to more positive, constructive feeling states, which can lead to a physiological response which will allow your mind to fully function in the exam room. So how do you do this? Step one, working with thoughts. Research has shown that our attitudes have a great impact on outcomes. A 2018 study at Stanford found that, quote, based on our data, the unique contribution of positive attitude to math achievement is as large as the contribution from IQ. Furthermore, the research team found that there was a positive feedback loop. A good attitude led to better results, which then informed more hopefulness, thereby successes. 
In working with students, I have found that it really helps to locate one's automatic thoughts. What are you telling yourself about the exam? Write down your automatic negative thought. For example, you catch yourself saying, I'll never do well on this exam, or this exam is going to be too difficult for me. Next to that, write down a thought reframe. A thought reframe is similar to an affirmation. Now the affirmation has to be realistic, something that you can believe about yourself. For example, you reframe, I'll never do well on this exam to, I'm going to do the best I can. I have faced the challenge of many exams in my life. Strategy number two, try to view the exam with curiosity and engagement. It is not a monster waiting to trick you. Think of the exam as an equal sparring partner. You also have skills. You have skills which you have developed over years and years in your life. Strategy number three, recognize that you do know what you have achieved, not only in this class, but over many years of education. Step two, working with feelings. Feelings can be tricky. They want you to believe that they are real. When your body feels that sense of panic, your mind then tells you that your feelings are justified. They are real. But I am here to tell you that feelings are like clouds in the sky. I want you to begin to practice this on a daily basis. Really hone your skill. Try noticing a feeling. Notice how it does not last forever. Notice how it may feel strong. It then gets weaker. You get distracted and sometimes even forget or are temporarily distracted from the feeling. It turns out that most feeling states only last about three minutes. It's the negative thoughts we have and the inability to manage our physical response that causes the feeling to recur. So if you can try to be a mindful observer of feeling, oh, there's fear, oh, there's sadness. Once you start to name it, you become separated from the feeling and you can simply let it flow through you and out of you. If it recurs, simply observe it again, watch it come and go like a cloud. Another way to habituate yourself to exam anxiety is to simply take more exams. Take any kind of exam you can get your hands on. Start with something fun that you can find online. I have provided here a link to a website where you can take fun tests. After you have tried this website, search for more tests which are perhaps more serious and work your way up. When you start to feel more comfortable, go over your old tests that you have taken. Simply looking at them and going through them is a form of exposure therapy, which can be very helpful. And finally, increase your supports. Before the exam, many students stand around and complain about how nervous they are, or how underprepared they are. This is not a constructive environment for you. It is best to have positive, uplifting conversations or even watch something funny or creative on YouTube, for example. Believe it or not, this will allow your mind and body to relax and be ultimately more effective. And finally, step three, working with the body. Eliciting the relaxation response through deep breathing. The Benson Henry Institute for Mind-Body Stress Reduction at Mass General Hospital suggests deep breathing as a way in which to elicit the relaxation response, which is the exact opposite of the stress response. I will teach you two techniques, counting breath, and affirmation breath. With counting breath, you simply silently count to yourself on the inhale. Gently hold at the top of the inhalation and then count on the exhalation. I find that it is best to count slowly. So to give an example, breathing in, counting one, two, three, then hold and release with the breath counting one, two, three. Affirmation breath, Thich Nhat Hanh, the late Vietnamese Buddhist suggests stating to oneself on the in-breath, I am, and on the out-breath, at peace. I am on the in-breath, at peace on the out-breath. Another affirmation that I like to teach is breathing slowly and stating to oneself, everything is going to be okay. This is a great breathing technique to use frequently throughout the exam that you are taking. Increase exercise. It is always good to do some sort of aerobic exercise before the exam. This will allow you to concentrate and focus better. The last two skills to incorporate are sleep, 7.5 to 8 hours. 
Studies have shown that not getting enough sleep has the same effect as being in the stress response, which you remember inhibits your cognitive abilities while taking the exam. Similarly, some evidence suggests that having stable blood sugar levels can reduce anxiety. So please try to eat a balanced meal the day of the exam. Putting it all together, in this presentation, we have learned about the effects of anxiety and stress and how they interfere with your functioning during an exam. We have also learned about the interplay between thoughts, feelings, and behaviors, which can perpetuate stress. Luckily, through the practice of working with your thoughts, learning to tolerate and work through difficult emotional states, and lowering the physical stress in the body, you can increase your skill agency, power, and management of exam anxiety. Of course, if you feel as though these skills are not enough and you would like professional help, please do not hesitate to reach out to the MIT Student Mental Health and Counseling Services at 617-253-2916. We have counselors who can help. Thank you for your time.